Hi, this video is uh, about the hereafter and death as discussed in the Quran. Once I heard Chris Evans saying on BBC2 how nice it would have been if we had died first and then lived forever. The Quran deals with the issue of death in detail. There is a book titled The Life in the Hereafter, What Does the Quran Say by G.A. Parvez and is available free at Islamic Dawn as one word dot com. Islamic Dawn dot com. It's also the book is also available with Amazon. In this short presentation, I will go through some of the issues which are discussed in the book in detail. There are essentially two concepts of life. One concept is that our physical self defines us. That means once we are dead, our brain is dead and there is nothing within the brain or the mind which can go forward. So it is the end of life. The second concept is that our self defines us. That is, as we live our life, our experiences, our education, our training helps to develop ourself and this self and with this with our identity it can go forward and 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 can regain consciousness and live another life the quran essentially deals with both concepts and gives out the details that it is wrong to assume that once the body is dead we are dead because the purpose of human creation is the accountability of everyone because we are given a free will, therefore we are responsible and accountable for what we do. There is a verse in chapter 45, verse 22, which says that Allah created the heavens and the earth as truth, so that every self is recompensed for what he or she do in this life and nobody is dealt with unjustly. Indeed, the Quran explains in detail the, the accountability process which we call as the law of law of requital. The law of requital says that each one of us, whatever we do and whatever we think, that affects ourselves. Whether somebody else or the human system can watch us or not, the fact is that even our thoughts impact on ourselves and the way it develops. Few examples here. If I put my finger in fire, it will burn. It doesn't matter who puts my finger into the fire. If somebody pushes it into the fire, still it will burn. Whether I know fire will burn or not, it will still burn. Now this is the physical cause and effect. As far as thinking is concerned, if I think that I will, I make a plan in my mind to go and do a robbery and I never do it, but still this thought will affect myself. Human system can only rely on, on physical witnesses, whereas our inner thinking process is beyond the accountability of the human uh, justice system. This is where the Quran says that Allah comes between us and our thinking. And if we look at the way we carry out our life, whatever we think that comes before what we do. In many cases, we take a lot of decisions within our mind and we never carry it out. So thinking is our silent act. And once we decide to do something or say something, then it becomes a visible act. Eric Fromm, in his book, The Man for Himself, he writes, and I will quote a paragraph from page 6667, which says, I quote, birth is only one particular step in a continuum which begins with conception and ends with death. All that is between these two poles is a process of giving birth to one's potentialities, of bringing to life all that is potentially given in the two cells. But while physical growth proceeds by itself, if only the proper conditions are given, the process of birth on the mental plane, in contrast, does not occur automatically. It requires productive activity to give life to the emotional and intellectual potentialities of man, to give birth to his self. 
It is part of the tragedy of the human situation that the development of the self is never completed. Even under the best conditions, only part of man's potentialities are realized. Man always dies before he is fully born. Obviously, Eric Fromm did not read the Quran and he did not know that there is another life which is based on our thinking and what we do in this life. And life, it is in the nature of life that it is like a flowing stream. It goes, it, it keeps going and keep progressing. Death is just like a bridge or a wall beyond which we may not be able to see, but we know it is coming. Because Quran emphasizes that for our thought process to be developed on those lines, we ought to have conviction first because it is our thinking which helps us to change ourselves. And then it says, do the righteous deeds for the good of mankind. The self develops by helping others. The body develops by helping our own self, for example, by eating food and having a better standard of living and doing exercise. So development of the self is quite opposite to the development of our physical self. I will quote here some of the verses from the Quran. In chapter 16, verse 111, the Quran says, and every self will be recompensed fully for all its actions and none will be treated unjustly. Because the system is inbuilt, so no injustice can be done. We are responsible for what we do and we cannot pass on our responsibility to others. But they only destroy their own self and they perceive it not. So says the Quran in chapter 6, verse 26. But Allah wronged them not. No, they wronged their own self. Chapter 16, verse 33. In chapter 2, verse 286, it says, Every self gets every good that it earns, and it suffers every ill that it earns. And in other verse, chapter 17, verse 7, If you did good deeds, you did it these for yourselves. If you did evil, you did it against your own selves. So the Quran says that the states of heavens, or the state of paradise and hell, is within your own hands. And nobody can take it away because it is based on your own achievement and it is based on the balance of good and bad deeds right in this life. The Quran in detail discusses it and this is all covered in the book which I quoted earlier. The Quran has compared our death with our sleep and it says in chapter 39 verse 42 that when we go to sleep our consciousness is suspended and when we get up early uh, when we get up from the sleep our consciousness is returned and it, it says uses it as a metaphor that our death is like that paradise and hell are also discussed in the quran though metaphors have been used at places from this worldly life but in other places as well the quran says that these are just examples to illustrate the point so paradise and hell are our inner states with which we leave this life. As I said earlier, the life is like a continuous flowing stream which goes forward and is not cyclical as some believe. We should remember that this is the only chance we have to produce, inverted commas, our own seed. The first birth was not in our hand. The death is not in our hand. We don't decide the time of death. The first birth, our parents brought us into this life. We never made a choice. We just landed in this life. Whereas now we have a chance to produce our own self just like a seed. And that's this seed, if we produce it within the permanent values, as noted in the Quran, then we go on to the next life where the environment will be such where this seed, which we produced our own selves, will grow into, grow further, and this growth will have no limits. If we do not avail this opportunity, then obviously we will not be able to grow our own selves in, in that environment, which is specifically built for, for the righteousness and for carrying out good deeds right in this life. So life is very serious. I will no, now go through some of the points about which Quran explains that what the paradise will be like. 
The Quran has used metaphors to explain it which relate to the life on earth, but has also said that we cannot understand it fully at our present level of consciousness. It will be based on our thinking and deeds in this life. It will be our achievement, so none could take it away from us. There will be no further death over there. So the Quran recognizes that death is a difficult, difficult episode in our life on earth. This is not likely to be gender based as there is no procreation requirement. So all those concepts which are related with the physical self in this life are against the Quran. This will have creative activity. The Quran has declared you will get what you wish for and there will be more than this. This additional requirement is what we do not understand in this life, but will be required for further progress. The intellect level will be far higher than this life. We will retain memory of this life, but without the sense of time. There will be many more stages of further development. That is, there will be no monotony in that life. There will be more creative, creative activity. We will retain our free will. For further details, Please read the book, The Life in the Hereafter, What Does the Quran Say, as I quoted earlier. Finally, we are free to make any choice in life. However, we are not free to alter the outcome of our choices, as these are determined by the law of requital. Thanks. Bye.